Hey everyone, what's up? It's Fena. I was very lucky to be involved in the Overwatch 2 PvP Alpha, and I, I want to share my thoughts with you. Note that this was an alpha, it's a very early build of the game, so anything is Serious. subject to change, and this build was purely focused on the gameplay. Just keep that in mind, because a very early build like this means that anything could change um, going into the beta. There's a lot to cover, so I'm gonna focus on a general overview rather than going deep on like, you know, a certain ability or something like that. There'll definitely be content out there for that kind of stuff, so just look out for that from other creators. I just wanna do like a, an overall feeling of how I felt about pl playing in the alpha. The Alpha had a few new maps, including Coliseo, Midtown, Circuit Royale, and the Toronto map. The new maps felt amazing to play on. Not only were they pretty, they were also well-designed. Initially, some of the maps were kind of daunting, and at first glance, almost seemed completely broken. For example, the high grounds on Circuit Royale are something we've never seen before. They are so high, and initially you just feel like it's a design flaw. But after a while, you learn that there are lots of cheeky little alternative paths that help you take ground, which also plays well into the 5v5 aspect, more on that later. And I love that they managed to create unique designs that we haven't seen before, but they still feel really good to play. Not only are there a bunch of new maps, the old maps also saw a lot of updates as well. The first thing that you notice is that each old map has new lighting, giving it a fresh new look and feel. The lighting itself feels like it affects the visuals more, with some maps making the game feel overall more desaturated, while others being extremely warm and vivid. Not only do the older maps have new lighting, they also added new small amounts of cover in places, since in 5v5 is it's going to be a lot more spread out and you won't have as much protection behind the shield. This makes a lot of sense and is a very welcome addition. The Alpha had the updated gun sounds that were teased a long time ago. The gun sounds are honestly amazing. Before playing and, and just going off the teasers, I was really worried it wouldn't feel like Overwatch anymore with more realistic gun sounds that reminded me of Apex when they teased them. But honestly, the weapons sound and feel so much more impactful without losing the Overwatchy vibe. Every time I played Ana on the Alpha, then came back to the live service, I just felt weaker, purely because I missed the punchy gun sounds. Probably one of the biggest changes coming to gameplay is the removal of one tank and the change to 5v5. Losing one tank is huge in terms of how the game plays. Now, I've been a believer in 5v5 ever since they announced it. There are just a bunch of great things that come with it. Faster Q times because the bottleneck right now is tanks for Qs. Less problems with shields. We all know how double shield has plagued the game for the last two to three years. Not just shooting shield is a very welcome addition. More spread out gameplay. I guess this is not everyone's cup of tea, but for me it's very enjoyable. With fights being more spread out, people get to showcase their skill more since naturally more smaller engagements happen. There's less visual clutter, and there's more impact as an individual player. Due to one less player being on the team, it means your impact goes up. As I played in the alpha, I felt like everything I just said and I expected was completely true, and I think 5v5 is gonna be an amazing change to the game. My new favorite game mode. While the other game modes feel like they were made and then adapted to ranked, push feels like it was made for ranked. It's a very back and forth game mode and exaggerates the spread out gameplay. It plays kind of like King of the Hill, except there's only one round. It's extremely fast paced and rewards flanks and player positioning heavily. The great thing about push is that there's always a chance for a comeback and I'm expecting to see some really epic comebacks on push that make for some great content. The other great thing about push is that since it's designed for ranked, there are no silly things like draws or anything like that. I love it. Again, I'm not going to go in depth on like each ability and each rework, but just how they impact the game as a whole and how they feel to play and play against. First off, Aris is actually fun. Okay, I get that not everyone found Arisa boring in Overwatch 1, but to me, she was the least fun hero in the game and this caused a lot of problems with shield usage and bunkering in Overwatch 1 and led to the dreaded double shield meta. Not only is Arisa extremely fun to play, she actually feels fun to play against. 
Her abilities are just exciting to see in action. It's even fun to get skewered by the Javelin. This is the same with the Doom rework. He's actually perfect as a tank. With the mobility and how he's played, he was never going to be fun to play against as a DPS. But give that same movement to a tank and suddenly he just makes sense. The Bastion rework is also fun, no longer a hero that just sits behind the shield, but a character that actually has some mobility, which leads to the defining trait of all of these reworks, movement. It's quite obvious at this point that they really want to get away from shield and bunker type gameplay and exchange it with more movement based gameplay. With 5v5 and the reworks to some of the most bunkery type characters in the game, the game always feels like it's moving and you never just sat blasting multiple shields. The Overwatch team has talked about how they want to reduce CC in the game, and they've definitely achieved that in the alpha. Uh, now that I get to this section of the video, I don't have much to say. I guess the biggest thing to talk about here is that hard flank heroes like Sombra and Tracer are extremely scary. But I want to get to that in a bit. But yes, overall, you do feel less restricted by CC in the alpha. Man, I missed the ping system when I came back to play Overwatch 1 on the live servers, dude. The ping system is so good for quieter players. I'm a big introvert, so I don't always like being on the mic, but I do it because I want to get as much of an advantage in the game as possible. In the alpha, I felt like I could still get that advantage, but without having to be on the mic all the time. You can ping places you want to push, flankers, and for focus fire on targets. The ping system is context aware as well. So if you ping a location, it will just be a blue ping. But if you ping an enemy, then it will be a red enemy ping. The ping also stays on the enemy's head as they move and or until they're out of line of sight anyway. So it's not just a ground ping. My hope is that they continue to add more things to the game, which mean that you don't have to communicate as much like the Anna sleep from the experimental patch. The Overwatch 2 Alpha plays very differently to the current live game. It feels less about building a powerful team comp with big sustain and shields and more about individual player skill and positioning. It feels more like a Quake-like game, which is what I think the Overwatch team always wanted from the early days, but unfortunately the game went down a dark path with shields and big tank sustain comps. Um, the play feels more dynamic with flanks almost always being an option instead of deathballing with the team. I think that players that are aggressive and creative will thrive in Overwatch 2, but people who are used to like sticking with the team and playing behind shields will definitely struggle heavily. Playing side angles and using small amounts of cover is paramount, and anytime you're out in the open, you will get destroyed. It's fast paced, aggressive, and with lots of carry potential. Okay, so so far I've had nothing but praise for the alpha, and it's all true. I do think that the alpha is a massive step in the right direction in every aspect. But supports kind of fell a bit out of place in the alpha. While tanks are getting massive reworks across the board with entire ability set reworks and just massive changes in general, damage heroes are getting a new hero and big reworks across the board. Barely anything changed for support. Here I have to reiterate that the alpha is an early build, so things can easily change going into the beta and forward, but by the end of the alpha, most supports were almost identical to what they were on live, with Brig being the most changed losing a stun on Shield Bash. Now you might say that maybe supports just didn't really need any changes because they're fine, but it didn't really feel like that. With less CC in the game, damage heroes getting an extra 10% movement speed, and some DPS heroes getting extra damage like Sombra, support felt extremely stressful and it often felt like there weren't answers to the flankers. Even in games where I had Emong on tank who was top 500 and ready to peel for me instantly, I would just get absolutely shredded by Sombra so fast that I just couldn't survive. Switching to Brig doesn't help because she can't stun anymore, and you can't ask for a cast because he also doesn't have a stun. I think one of the biggest things causing this is the 10% extra movement speed for damage heroes. It basically means there is absolutely no way of getting away from any DPS hero that is on you. You can no longer outrun them, so even if you're behind cover, they can just chase you down. The support passive they gave, which is self-healing after being out of combat, doesn't really help in these scenarios because there's no time to get out of combat against terrors that are faster than you. This means that the strongest supports in Overwatch 2 are ones that have good movement. Moira, Lucio, Mercy. 
They really seem like the best picks right now, and if nothing changes going into the beta and forward, I'm really scared for the slower supports like Ana, Bap, and Zen. But often they just feel stressful to play support against flankers, uh, because there aren't many answers to them with the insane power of DPS. This does mean though that support players who can duel DPS and survive really well will thrive in Overwatch 2. I actually think support is initially going to be the hardest role to play well until there are changes that help support survive. With that said, this is the only negative feedback I have from playing the alpha. Everything else I talked about heavily outweighs this issue, and since everything else is done so well, I actually have a lot of hope that they will give support some love, and we might even see some big changes as early as the beta. This was just my alpha experience. Well, that's it for my general thoughts. I think the future of Overwatch is extremely bright, and I can't wait to see the changes that come with the beta. Um, if you guys have any questions about the alpha, if I can answer them, I will. So let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, there's going to be Overwatch 2 Alpha PvP gameplay videos coming up multiple times a day on this channel until the beta is out. So I hope you guys enjoy those as well. If you want to see those, make sure you subscribe. Otherwise, thank you for watching. Have a good night and uh, peace, guys.